In this video, we're going to look at a common mistake students make when trying to solve quadratic equations. And I'm going to demonstrate this by looking at these two examples. So remember, a quadratic equation is one which contains an x squared term as the highest power, and these need to be solved by factorising. Well, there are a few methods for solving them, but the algebraic method is factorising. So students will often remember that. They'll see an equation like this and they'll say, hey, that's an x squared equation. That's a quadratic. They might not be able to name it, but they'll know that it's a type of equation that involves some kind of factorising method. So they'll say, hey, wait a minute, I know what to do here. I can pull out a common factor of x. So they'll go x and then open a bracket and then they'll go x plus 2, usually getting that factorising correct. And then they kind of also remember that these generally have two solutions and there's something to do with splitting it off into two equations. And they'll go, right, I've kind of got that now because I can go x equals 8 and they write that down as a first solution. And then I've got this x plus 2 equals 8 and that's going to give me my second solution and I'll go ahead and solve this to get x equals 6. And these are the two solutions. Now, we can test whether or not those are the correct solutions, which they're, they're not by plugging them back into the original equation because the solutions to any equation should satisfy the original equation. So if we take, for example, the 8 and put it back into the original, so we get 8 squared plus 2 times 8, then that should all total up to be 8 if the equation is going to be satisfied. But 8 squared is 64, 2 times 8 is 16, so that comes out to be 80 which is nowhere near 8, so it didn't even come close to satisfying the equation. So where did we go wrong in this question? Well, we went wrong because quadratic equations have to be set equal to 0 before you factorise. So let's take a look at what we should have done. We should have started by subtracting 8 from both sides to make the equation x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. In other words, making it into a quadratic expression, a trinomial in this case, equal to 0. From there, we then factorise into two brackets, not one bracket, although it is possible to factorise into one bracket in a quadratic equation, but not this particular one. And then a plus 4 and a minus 2, that would give us a minus 8 when we multiply those together. Positive 4 minus 2 gives us plus 2, so that's the correct factorisation. And it's those two brackets that we then separate into two mini equations to get x plus 4 equals 0 and to get x minus 2 equals 0, given solutions of x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 2. And it should be that if we plug those back into the original equation, um, the equation is satisfied. So if I take the 2, for example, and put it back into here, we're going to get 2 squared plus 2 times 2, and that should come out to be 8. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 plus 4 does give us 8, and that does satisfy the original equation. So I see students doing this all the time, and not only inexperienced students, but even calculus students who have been doing quadratic equations for years will make this mistake. And why do they make the mistake? It's because these are quadratic equations, but the other type of equation which is commonly solved is a linear equation. So something like this. If you've got the equation 2x plus 1 equals 11, that's a different type of equation altogether. That's a linear equation. It's just got an x to the power of one term. When you solve linear equations, though, we don't use this technique. There's no factorising. There's no equal to zero. In fact, the goal here is to separate the variables, the x's, from the numbers. So in this case, we would subtract 1 from both sides to get 2x equals 10, and then divide both sides by 2 to get a final solution of 5. But because students have generally done hundreds, if not thousands, of linear equations before they get to quadratic equations, they're used to getting the number on one side and the variables, the x's on the other. That's why they set it up like this, and then they carry on and get these incorrect solutions. So the, the really important point is to note that linear equations and quadratic equations are separate types and they need separate methods for a solution. And in fact, quadratic equations turn into linear equations um, at this point. So, so that's a really, really common mistake. And it's not only when the equation is written like this and students fail to take the 8 over to the other side, even if it's already set up correctly, equal to 0, set up as a trinomial, students will still do the same thing because instinctively they see an equation and they think of this sort of setup rather than it being a quadratic and they'll go like this, x squared 
minus 10x. Wait a minute, I've got an equation. I need to get the x's on one side, the numbers on the other. So they'll put the 21 on the other side, to make it a minus 21. And then they'll carry on with the factorizing like this. And then they've now fallen into the trap that we fell into here. And they're going to carry on and still get two solutions, but they're going to be incorrect solutions. What they should have done was just from this first line, go straight to factorizing because the equation was already set equal to zero. This would factorize with a three and a seven and two negatives. And these would eventually give solutions of x equals three for the first factor. And then for the x minus seven factor, um, a solution of x equals seven. So like I say, it's not only new algebra students and inexperienced students that make this mistake, lots of students make it. Just be mindful that you're always working with a different type of equation. Ask yourself, is that a linear equation? Is that a polynomial equation? Is that a quadratic equation? Is that a trigonometric equation? They all need different methods of a solution. So I hope that helps and any questions or comments, please just leave them in the box below.